What is up and welcome back to Lester Athletes, I'm Shadow and today like always another interesting video for you here on my channel, best NBA players to build around 26 and under. Um, first off, let me say this before it happens, there is something going on in my apartment that I have recently moved in and you're going to hear um, my fire alarm uh, beep. Um, I know this probably means the batteries are out or whatever it means, but we just put in new batteries and the place said that the fire alarm is just defected. You just heard it now. So. Um, yeah, please bear with me um, with that noise, but other than that, uh, this is going to be a very interesting video. Um, let me just say this before I preference this. This is definitely a controversial video. This is definitely a video that people aren't going to agree with me. This is definitely a video that um, I think some players um, uh, or people are going to have their own opinions. 26 and under. So if you're 26 and under, you are on this video. Um, I'm going to talk about how I think players can move up. I think players can move down. I'm going to talk about why I like certain players, why I don't like certain players. But I'm going to tell you now, this is going to be very controversial. This is just controversial. Um, so we're going to have to see what happens. But yeah, uh, make sure to like and subscribe on the video. The goal is 23% at the end of the year. Hopefully we hit it. Uh, it'd be very nice to see if we hit it. Uh, it's usually right now been like 7%-ish. Um, so we're getting there-ish. So we'll have to see. Yeah, but other than that, let's begin. So I have some honorable mentions here. Zion, Donovan Mitchell, and Jalen Brown, which you might think is crazy to not have Donovan Mitchell on this list, which I understand. I understand. Um, but the fact is, is that what I'm going to be talking about during this whole video is that NBA is moving towards a new generation of basketball where somebody like Magic Johnson would be a prime player for. Um, positionless basketball with height is a big factor. Um, longevity is a big factor in a do it your all do it all factor. Zion's not here because of health concerns, mentality concerns, everything concerns. It feels like with Zion Williamson recently, somebody that could have been the star of NBA now probably isn't. Donovan Mitchell is here because, and I think he could be ten or nine ish too. It's right there. Uh, he is twenty six, so he's a little bit older than some people on here. Um, he's twenty six. He's a very great scorer. Um, but you know, when he's been the point guard for a team, they haven't done well. He's not an amazing passer. He's a very good just combo guard, scoring guard. Um, but that's not me to say that he's only a scorer. That's me saying that that's his main thing and he doesn't have a do it your all. Jalen Brown is very close to. Um, we have seen him lead his own team. Um, he's really just been that guy for, I think, the Celtics. That's been just, It's perfect as a secondary star. And, you know, do you really want secondary stars to build around? That's the big thing about it. Um, you know, the playmaking ability is kind of crazy. The camp dribble with left hand is kind of crazy. So, you know, honorable mention. But we're going to go with 10. And I'll explain why for every single one. So right now, Trey Young is 24. Uh, number 10 um, for me is Trey Young. The scoring ability is absurd with the fact that he can score so well at such a smaller size, which is, is the one player that defines a smaller size. But when I say defines, means he does lack defense. You could put Trey Young up here just for the ability to play make. To uh, he can play make very very well. Um, he can score the ball very very well. He can do anything offensive that's very good. Defensively, he's a liability. That's a big thing you don't want, uh, which you already have to make up if that is the player you're building around. So I put him here as 10. But I put him over the other guys there because his ability to play, make, and facilitate is unmatched um, and is a huge thing. I'm going to say this throughout this whole video. The NBA is moving towards build around the guy that can facilitate the ball and increase the uh ceilings of others we've heard about it from magic gm with talking about anthony black we've heard it with tyrese alburn um we've heard it from other players like a luca that can pass the ball that can open up it um rockets need a point guard that can facilitate the ball because they open up opportunities help the ceiling 
whatever it might be, Trey Young is one of the best facilitators. So right then and there, you have somebody that can already pass the ball. He can facilitate, increase ceilings for other players. Trey Young here is at 10. Number nine for me is Paulo Bancaro, which I think is very controversial. Um, when I'm talking about a do it your all type of player, Paulo Bancaro is really not a do it your all. But the fact is, is that this guy's 6'10, 6'11. He's 20 years old, averaging 20 points per game, can rebound the ball very well, can sometimes pass the ball too. Um, that's something that is crazy to say that a 19, 20 year old averaged 20 points per game in their rookie season, rightfully run rookie of the year. Um, and he's the franchise player for the Magic. I think a lot of people would build around him. Um, he did; He's doing decent for Team USA. But here's the thing is that, you know, you could say, oh, Magic are playing empty calorie minutes with him, um, whatever. They did do pretty decent with, uh, with Paulo now being there. Um, I do just have to say that, you know, it's very interesting to see where Paulo Bencaro would do next year. I think a jump could happen. Um, and if a jump does happen, it's going to go very well with the Orlando Magic. I think there's playoff potential. Or, sorry, I should say more play-in potential, um, which is very good. I think that would be okay with that. Um, but we're going to have to really see if other teams also helping out. But I put Paulo here just off the fact that being 20 years old, averaging that much points, knowing how, you know, sometimes the efficiency not there, but when you're so young, the efficiency is not really going to be there. And then they started becoming better and better throughout the year. So Paulo Bancaro at number nine for me. At number eight, we have Tyrese Halburn. When I'm talking about facilitators that are going to work well and increase ceilings, Tyrese Halburn, of course, is the number one that jumps out there. There is, of course, a reason why players that are going to Indiana or have played with Tyrese Halliburton go, Paulo Bancaro, for example, had talked about when Team USA, there's not a pass that I do not love that Tyrese Halliburton has thrown, which is crazy to say. That's Paulo Bancaro talking about it uh, for just a Team USA, you know, team. Um, people are going to go to these players that uh, want to have great point guards that can create for them. Um, I think the Pacers, when they had Tyrese Halliburton, were a great team. Once he got injured, they kind of, you know, downfall. Now, the fact that he's kind of coming back, he has more assets too. I feel good about a Tyrese Halliburton potentially uh, working for the Indiana Pacers and being a person you should build around at number eight because players are going to come to him. Uh, he has the height. He can rebound. He can score too. He has a weird three-point shot, but he can still knock down shots. Tyrese Halliburton is a player that is going to attract attraction um, in teams and uh, players to wherever you have him, and I think that's somebody you want on your team. At number seven, we have Devin Booker. I feel like it would be very um, an L list if I don't have Devin Booker somewhere on this list. Just all the fact that at 26, he's now entering his prime, probably a couple years into his prime, actually. Um, his ability to score the ball, his ability to, you know, sometimes play point guard and sometimes pass the ball. Maybe not amazing, but he can still do it when he needs to. Um, and in the playoffs, he's very efficient and clutch when it comes down to it more than some other players like a Donovan Mitchell, for example, that's so low, but the scoring is just so high up there. The ability to also kind of rebound. Let me also say this. I never, I never really thought about this till now. Donovan Mitchell's like six, one, six, two. Devin Booker is not. Devin Booker has at least some height to his advantage. That's why it's hard for, you know, the Cleveland Cavaliers. They have to make up that defensive potential in a Jared Allen and Evan Mobley because they're two players or 6'1", 6'2". So you have Devin Booker here. I think the ability that he can score the ball, he can, you know, go at the rim, he can pass out the efficiency, the playoff play. He's... He's a great player that I still think you would want to, you know, build around and you could add assets around him. At number six, you have John Morant. Maybe a crazy take, but John Morant is somebody I thought could win MVP maybe maybe next year or maybe two years from now. In this three-year gap, I thought before all this, you know, all this stuff happened, before that happened, I thought John Moran had a chance at MVP. Um, we'll have to see what happens with his mentality and uh, his way looking at the game. But I do think that John Moran is somebody that, you know, is starting to get triple doubles. Something that, you know, he's starting to tap into that. We always call him a mini Russ where he's so athletic and jumping out the gym and uh, can rebound as a good guard. Um, you know, that's something that we're seeing now from John Morant. 
And I think that is going to tap into his full potential that he's starting to hit, um, where he can already pass the ball very well. His athleticism, his way to get to the rim and score, his way to, you know, start shooting the ball and score, um, whatever it might be. John Morant is an excellent player, and I feel good about having him six because, you know, even that there is some issues off the court, he makes up for it in his game. And like I said, what's really going to matter about having him here at six is how does he approach the whole situation after the 25-game suspension? Um, it's going to be interesting. But, yeah, John Moran is somebody that, you know, I feel pretty good about. At number five, we have Victor Webb and Yama. Um, when I talk about a player that we're entering a new generation where height matters, this is probably the biggest player that, that matters. He's 6'3 without his shoes, so with his shoes, probably around 6'4", 6'5". I said 6'7", six, sorry. 7 3 uh, with it without his shoes, 7 4, 7 5 with his shoes. Um, the ability to be a fast player, to dribble the ball, to be versatile, to block shots, to score the ball, to do everything except for maybe efficiency wise, which 19, he's 19, so just relax on that. Um, and maybe uh, pass the ball. He can pass the ball, I think, a little bit better. Um, it's not really amazing, but he definitely showed in the summer league that when players were on and attracting him, he could be able to pass the ball out to his teammates for them to score. Um, if we saw many plays like that, because people are going to double team him, of course. Um, Victor Wembanyama is somebody that, of course, any team will be willing to, I think, build around. I have him five here because I think it's, you know, a, it's a. It's hard to say he's going to be better than these five players ahead of him because he hasn't even stepped a foot onto the NBA. Maybe you're already calling me crazy because I have him over Jaw, Devin Booker, and them. Um, I would think you would probably agree with me that him being 19 and having all the potential factors for this is very good. Um, but yeah, we'll just have to see. At number four, we have Anthony Edwards, somebody that I think is starting to gain some attraction. Not overrating, but definitely um, people are starting to notice him and, you know, put him in those conversations that are sometimes wild, but sometimes true. Um, Anthony Edwards is here because of something that I've learned about Anthony Edwards is he's starting to know how to perfect his game. When I say that, I mean, I'm noticing that he's learning that oh, I can score the ball from the outside a lot, but I can also score from the inside a lot too because I'm that athletic. Um, he's starting to do that. We saw with Team USA. Um, I feel good with Anthony Edwards going to the season. He's going to be probably the best shooting guard in the NBA in probably a couple years. Um, he can score the ball. He's played point guard position, but I think he works better with a teammate around him that can facilitate, but he can also rebound. There's defensive mentality too with him where he's not just somebody that, you know, is pretty bad on defense. He has like a mentality and a confidence. That's why he's so much up here that it's worth it for him to try and go around because he's also has played point guard and has gone those assists, but he knows how to play the game well. Um, I feel good playing Anthony Edwards here at four, but it's going to be interesting to say. Uh, we'll see what happens. Number three, I have your Shea Gilders Alexander. Um, the way that Shea is a 6'5", 6'6", guard and can score 30 plus, uh, 31 points per game with the Oklahoma State Thunder, who, to be honest, didn't even have that many, um, you know, uh, great players around, but still had young guys that could work and work well, and now they're going to have even more. Um score very well can rebound the ball very well can pass the ball very well do all of that very very well a do it all guy like i've talked about being the point guard and also being able to play shooting guard for them um shows that positionless like i've said shows the height advantage and something i haven't even talked about yet the two guard the two-way guard potential is absurd you know, averaging a steal, averaging a block. This guy can do it all. He's shown block potential. He knows how to steal the ball very, very well, too. He's a very good defensive guard. And when you have a player that can score very well, have great defensive potential, and work all around, it's very, very nice. And I think any team would be willing to have that. At number two, we have Jason Tatum. Um, Jason Tatum is here because, you know, I talked about how we're moving into this uh, certainty of guard positions and facilitators. But the fact is Jason Tatum uh, takes all of that and says, I can show you up with it, where 
forwards are kind of lacking in the NBA. 3 and D players is, is a must need. There's they need, We need great wings. And Jason Tatum's an amazing wing. Somebody that can score the ball very well. Can, you know, defensively be there at times. Or maybe it's not amazing. But he definitely has learned from an Ime Odoko or a, you know, Joe Missoula um, uh, coaching uh, uh, scheme. Jason Tatum is also somebody that before the heat injury was an Iron Man for many times where he wasn't really out for injury for games or anything like that. It was very rare for him to miss games, which is very good. Somebody that can shoot the three point ball, somebody that is just, you know, can rebound the ball very, very well. Somebody that is just a very good player, knows the techniques, knows how to work around the players, knows his shots, knows that. And, you know, people might say the biggest thing in basketball is getting the ball into the bucket. Well, he knows how to do that, but he also going to help you with the def- defensive side. I think Jason Tatum is just elite when it comes to, you know, knowing where to go, knowing how to use a defender, whatever it might be. And I think you really want that. Um, let me also say this. We have to... We have to count that this guy's 19 and has always gone to the playoffs and gone to the Eastern Conference uh, Finals many, many times. There's a reason why. There is a reason why. And you can't say it's just Jalen Brown or the defense. It's because of Jason Tatum, too. So I have him here at number two. And, of course, at number one, the most deep-fried NBA headshot uh, on here, Luka Doncic. When I talk about players that can do it all and can lead a team and do everything they must... Luka Doncic is probably the number one player uh, in the NBA right now that can do that. Uh, 26 and under, let me say, because let me not get Nikola Jokic up in here. Um, his ability to rebound the ball, pass the ball, score the ball, the ability to, you know, Team Sylvania. He works well with that team, and he gets the same amount of stats with that team because he knows how to just play basketball and adapt to any uh, situation. Luka Doncic is... Luka Magic like we have already named him Luka Magic all this stuff we know how he works like he can he is defining basketball now where probably entering the NBA we didn't maybe look at him as a four-star point guard now he's a four-star point guard that's 6'8 that defensively up in the air but I think the offensive side he creates ceilings and ceilings for his players probably more than you know Sometimes, no, I wouldn't say more than Tyrese Halliburton. Very close to Tyrese Halliburton. um, But has more uh, offensive scoring, more clutchness, more rebounding-ness. He's just a better player overall. And, you know, there's a reason why the Mavericks did so well, not last season, but the years before that. Um, And I really like Luka, and Luka's obviously going to be number one on my list. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Definitely a controversial video. Tell me what you guys think. I'll explain why I think that, whatever it might be. But I always love the comments. Um, But other than that, I hope you guys enjoy. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.